Welcome to Nevada Newsmakers on the broadcast today. Julie Butler, she's the director of the Nevada Department of Motor Vehicles. Yes, the DMV for the whole show on an all new Nevada Newsmakers. Retail's impact on Nevada's economy, enormous. 8,600 businesses, large and small, employing 145,000 workers. And last fiscal year, retail paid tax on nearly $60 billion in sales. We're the Retail Association of Nevada. We support retail, we help it grow, and we mean business. R-A-N-N-V dot org. Pro Group Management is the place where companies can find workers' comp solutions that are designed to meet their specific business requirements. As regulations evolve, Pro Group takes a proactive approach to clear the path to make sure your business stays ahead of the curve. Knowing your workers' comp program is optimized, you can focus on other important matters related to your growing business. Pro Group Management, workers' comp that works for you. Safety is the number one priority for the trucking industry. Over $7 billion a year is spent on technology like this electronic eye that will apply the brakes automatically but the most important factor for safety is the truck driver. These hardworking men and women who safely move over 70% of our nation's freight and 94% of Nevada's. We thank you because trucks move America forward. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad, a no holds barred political forum. Now from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we're delighted to welcome to the program for the first time Julie Butler. She is director of the Nevada, Nevada Department of Motor Vehicles, better known as the DMV. Pleasure to have you here on the program. Thank you for having me. Um, so I wanted to start out with Real ID okay. because people are really not familiar with that. I mean, it's been talked about quite a bit over the last couple of years, um, but if people haven't gotten a new driving license in the last few years, if they try to travel without a passport, they're gonna have a lot of problems at airports. Would you explain what Real ID is and why people should know whether they have it or not on their license? Sure, be happy to. So uh, the Real ID Act was passed in 2005 by Congress and it, it mandates a certain set of minimum standards to prove individuals' identity. The recommendations came out of the 9-11 Commission. And so states have been um, implementing Real ID in phases over several years. And so we're to the point now where the Department of Homeland Security has set a deadline for the final phase of Real ID, meaning you need to have a Real ID in order to fly come October 1st of 2020. So um, you can tell if you have one or not by on your driver's license, there will be a little gold star in the top right hand corner of your, of your driver's license. So. Um, I would agree with you that not a lot of people are aware of this nationally. I just saw a report that some, you know, 72% of people are not aware that of this requirement. And in Nevada, we've got 42% uh, of our population does not have a real ID. So that equates to 865,000 people. So between now and next year, if you plan to fly and you don't have a real ID and you don't have a passport or a military ID, say, um, you, you're going to be stranded at the airport, and we're really trying to prevent that from happening. And, and so literally, for those that may not have understood that, you go to the airport, you show your ID with your boarding pass, and they're not going to let you board the plane. They're not going to let you onto mm -hmm. the concourse. That's correct. Yeah, if you don't have a real ID. So what we're, we're going to be starting an active media campaign about that next month. And the message that we're trying to convey is, first of all, you might not need it. If you already have a passport, or military ID, you're not going to need a real ID. Those well, will get you through. If, if you take it with you. If you take it with you. Right. Yes, if you take it with you. Yeah. Right. But um, if you don't have a passport or a military ID, um, then and you plan to fly, uh, yes, you are going to need that real ID. And that is a transaction that you have to come into the DMV to perform to get that driver's license. Okay, and, and it doesn't make any difference when the expiration is of your driver's license. This is going to kick in even if your driver's license expires after that deadline. That's correct. So um, we know that there are about 135 
8,000 people between now and next October whose driver's license are, are going to expire. You know, those people are going to absolutely have to come in. It's that other, you know, 700 and some thousand that, that we're concerned about and we're trying to target that message to. If, if first of all, if you already have a passport, you can use that as, as your identification to fly. But if you don't, you're going to have to come in and, and get that real ID if you, if you plan to do airline travel. Okay, so is there any break in the pricing because you're not going to be running your license out to the limit uh, that you normally have? Or are you just going to have to pay the regular fees no matter what, even if you're, you know, uh, renewing early? Um, I don't have the answer to that. Um, I, I don't know. Um, well, so I think I'm you should sorry. find out. I should find Julie? out. <laughs> I should find That's out. That's a pretty important that is, one there. That is a very important one. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know. Because, for example, when you're traveling uh, on your passport and you go to Europe, you have to have a passport that uh, uh, is not going to ex expire within the next six months. Otherwise, certain countries won't let you mm -hmm. come in, even for a, a one-week trip. And so uh, when you renew your passport, you don't get any breaks on the, on the pricing on that. Right. Right. Um, I've, um, I would assume that we are not going to give any breaks on the pricing on that, um, but you know that's something that, that I would have to confirm with staff, and that would be part of, of the media campaign that, that we push out. Okay, all right, so, so that, that, that's probably the biggest thing that's going to affect the most amount of people mm -hmm. um, that's going on. Um, you know as well as I do, because you've had to deal with this, um, that uh, the Las Vegas Review Journal did a, a major piece uh, back in June, I believe it was, um, and it was um, about a lawsuit. This was reported by Arthur Kane, a lawsuit uh, alleging bribery corruption tied to DMV contract. Um, and, you know, uh, the, the opening paragraph says, state employees delayed the implementation of a Department of Motor Vehicles computer modernization program because the contractor failed to pay them as much as $4 million in bribes, a lawsuit obtained by the Review Journal alleges. What happened with this? Is it all sealed? Is it all over? Where, where are we with this? Um, this is... And you inherited this. I this inherited was not this. something that you came in with. Right. I inherited this. Um, this the lawsuit was unsealed, and so it is, um, it is a matter of public record. This uh, former uh, employee of the contractor that was going to modernize the DMV systems had made these allegations that um, of, of wrongdoing and corruption and um, the department has has done its due diligence and um, we consider that, that this matter is over um, and we're focused on moving forward. Um, were there any, was anybody punished in this in this situation? We had uh, two employees that were put on administrative leave while the department conducted investigations and um, those investigations concluded and those employees were brought back after the investigation. Okay, and one of the people involved in this um, was moved to another position and they're, uh, are they still in charge of the modernization program um, for the computer systems? Um, one of the, well, two of the employees still work in the IT division. Um, the director at the time um, has since moved over to our Office of uh, Project Management for our modernization effort. Um, she will be retiring um, in, uh, before the end of the calendar year. Okay, and this was a situation where the governor potentially looked at it, removing her from this position but was unable to because of the position that she had taken? No, okay. no. Um, we, the department conducted two recruitments um, to fill that position and um, the, the former director was the most qualified candidate for that position of the, of the applicants that were received. Okay. Um, where are we with the modernization? Because this has right. been a hugely expensive project. Um, is, is all the original work gone and did you have to start from scratch again? Um, the yes and no. So the department spent several million dollars on equipment, um, basically servers, hardware, and, and, and things of that nature. Um, and it's true that the, the department is not able to use that going forward. Um, however, the, the requirements that were gathered, um, the artifacts that were put together um, are still valid. We still need what we need. So um, we're going to be able to use that, um, that hard work going forward and the labor that went into that. 
So in terms of where we currently are today, um, I'm, I'm really excited actually of both where we're at in that um, we just uh, finalized a contract. It will, it will go to the Board of Examiners next month, which is the final step in a contract uh, approval process, to um, have a vendor come in and do a baseline assessment of our systems. So throughout all of this, this uh, modernization effort, it's my understanding that, that that was never really done. And so our systems are ancient by technology standards. Right. They were built in the 90s, and as laws have come down from, from the federal government, from the state legislature, things get added layers upon layers. And so what you have is a situation where um, my staff liken it to the Winchester house. Right. So it's, it's just very clunky and inefficient to maintain. But there might be bits and pieces of that, that that are salvageable and should be maintained. So we have retained a consultant to come in and help us take a look at, at the Winchester house, right? Keeping in with that analogy, what can we keep? What should be tossed? Um, and in terms of what should be tossed, how should we replace that? Should we look at another state solution? Should we look at commercial products? Should we code some of it ourselves? These are all questions that are going to be answered by this baseline assessment. And so that's going to move forward coming next month. Okay, so, so what, what will the benefits eventually be for the public? What, what, what will they see out of this? Improved customer service. So um, the, the three goals that we really want to accomplish with our modernization effort going forward are improving the customer experience, improving staff's experience to be able to efficiently do their work on behalf of our customers, and then improving our abilities to track, our, to track and report the revenues that we collect, which, is, which are significant. And, and right now... Um, and you, you don't have that at this point? It's clunky. So right now, we take in uh, $1.6 billion in revenue every year, and we're doing that on, on spreadsheets. Wow. Yeah. So it's, it, like I say, it's clunky. And, and w anytime you're doing that and you're doing a manual process, it's, it's prone to error. You know, and there are ways to modernize that, and it's a significant portion of our business. So, so that's something we need to do. And so just like you don't have the capabilities with a flip phone as you would have with a cell phone, we're to that point with our IT systems. Yeah, they work, but they don't have the capabilities to really deliver the, the services that our customers demand. And so that's the need to modernize. Okay, so, so that immediately brings up another question, which is cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have incredible amounts of data, yes. and you're running it on systems that were built in the 90s. Mm -hmm. What is your situation regarding cybersecurity? And, and that's not an IT question, that's a cybersecurity mm -hmm. question. Mm -hmm. that, um, that keeps me up at night. Um, and that's something that we're, we're actively looking at. Um, there are tools that we were uh, funded for in this last legislative session to improve our security posture. Um, we're in active conversations with the Department of Administration, uh, Enterprise IT Services, who actually houses our mainframe to make sure that, um, that they're backing up our data as, as they should be. Um, and so that's something that I'm very focused on going, um, going from now and going forward. Um, we're, um, no system is, is perfect. You know, and, and we read daily almost in the news about, you know, some new agency getting hacked or um, you know, ransomware. And, and we're actively taking steps to um, hopefully not find ourselves in that position. Um, there's been a lot of discussion about the front door being uh, uh, secure, but it's the back door that people are concerned about. Mm -hmm. How many attacks per day does the DMV get from potential hackers? I mean, is it in the millions? Um, I don't have that number off the top of my head, but, uh, but we're an active target um, because we do, everybody wants our data, um, whether that's, you know, Social Security Administration or Health and Human Services or LexisNexis or, you know, whom, whomever. There's, a, there's a, a wealth of DMV data that, um, that people want, and so we, we are aware we're always an active target, and, and like I say, we're taking steps to to address that. Okay, so I, 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 don't, I don't mean to be rude, but, but I mean, it surprises me that you don't know how many attacks per day, because I mean, you know, I, I would imagine it's at least in the, th in the multiple thousands, if not the millions. It, it's very possible. Um, I, I, I don't have that number off the top of my head. Okay, so, so in addition to IT people, do you have cybersecurity people working with you? Because they're really two different things. One yeah. is running the system. The mm -hmm. other one is looking to prevent, you know, because I mean, for example, if you were attacked with ransomware, 
you know, I mean, I don't think the governor would be real thrilled to hear that, uh, you know, there was a, a $50 million ransom on the DMV. Correct, and I don't think he would either. Um, we do have a, an information security officer. Um, we have um, another individual who was our former information security officer, um, has taken another position with our modernization effort, and will be actively looking as we go forward as part of the modernized solution to make sure that, that whatever solutions we choose are built with security uh, in the forefront. So, um, and then those are, uh, again, um, conversations that we're actively having with Department of Administration to make sure those back-end systems are, are protected and that data is, is currently replicated. We do replicate that data off-site, um, so, so that is um, some comfort that, that agencies can take. It is behind firewalls, so, you know, we, we are actively taking steps to protect the data. Can we do more? Sure. Um, again, it, then you, you get into the realm of, of cost and, and budget, and so those are discussions that, that will be had during the next legislative session. I wonder, you know, uh, with a case of ransomware, looking at some of the, the major national stories that are broken about this, can you afford not to have the money budgeted for that? I don't think so. So that will be a, you know, again, for the next legislative session, a, a, an active part of our budget. Can we wait that long? Is it something that should be done in the interim? That's or at least discussed? Again, that's, that's why we're having those discussions with Department of Administration. And, and we'll look to see what, what costs they come back with and how we would move money around to accommodate that. All right, let's take a break. More with Julie Butler, Director of the DMV, when we come back. Tamarack Junction is South Reno's hotspot with over 450 of the latest slots and video games. Sully Sports Bar, the Dining Car Restaurant, William Hill Sportsbook, and the Tamarack Steakhouse and Lounge. We're just north of the Summit Mall in South Virginia. Yeah. Because of UMC, I'm putting my free time to good use. Because of UMC, she keeps me on my toes. Because of UMC and this guy, I'm here. UMC, the highest level of care in Nevada. Hi, I'm Eric Robnett, owner of Home Energy Experts. Has this ever happened to you? Honey, did you remember to turn down the thermostat? <sighs> Forgetting to set the temperature? Not fun. We can help. Our new smart thermostat keeps the temperature set for your comfort all by itself. I'm feeling hot now. <sighs> to increase your comfort, go to homeenergyexperts.com for details. That's homeenergyexperts.com. The signs and symptoms of cataracts can start out small with subtle changes in your vision. So don't wait. Be proactive and take your vision into your own hands. If you're experiencing the onset of cataracts or just have questions, contact your eye care professional or call Eye Care Associates of Nevada today. Dr. Hiss has years of experience specializing in the surgical correction of eye disorders and has completed over 84,000 vision correcting procedures. At Eye Care Associates of Nevada, we'll change the way you look at the world. The Tamarack Junction Steakhouse is known for signature steaks, handcrafted cocktails, and world-class wines. Join us Thursdays and Friday nights from 4.30 to 6.30 in the Steakhouse Lounge for live music, gourmet plates, and well-priced wines just north of the Summit Mall on South Virginia. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Julie Butler. She's the director of the Nevada Department of Motor Vehicles, better known as the DMV. Um, wanted to talk to you about uh, what's going to be happening going forward, which is the tracking of uh, vehicle miles, mm -hmm. odometer readings. Um, some people, you know, from a, a, a taxing purpose, look at uh, electric vehicles and others that use the roads and say, well, you know, they, they're not paying uh, the taxes that maintain these roads. Other people are saying we don't want the government knowing, you know, where we're going, what we're doing. Mm -hmm. um, tell me your, your thoughts on this and, and whatever concerns you might have. Um, my thoughts on this are that it, it's, a, it's a fact that our gas dollars, um, the taxes generated from, from the gas tax have been eroding over several decades. As and this is fuel efficiency. Fuel efficiency yeah. standards increase. Um, the, the tax rate itself hasn't changed in decades, um, particularly at the federal level. And yet inflationary costs, whether that's labor costs, cost of construction and materials have gone up. So over time, the purchasing power of that gas tax revenue has eroded. 
and it's something that is that all states are grappling with. We've got this infrastructure of roads nationwide with a declining revenue base to support it. And so when you look at um, the fact that, you know, right now, uh, as you and I drive, well, I don't know you, what you drive, but I drive a, a gas-powered vehicle. You know, I'm uh, paying, essentially paying at the pump for the, the roads, the use of the road that, uh, that I drive. And um, folks that drive electric vehicles aren't, but yet they're using the roads. So it's something to where, you know, we all, we all drive on them. We all uh, contribute to the wear and tear, and yet not everybody's paying for that. So, you know, I think that's something that, that our legislature is, is actively involved in looking at, and, and other states nationwide are, are actively looking at that as well. Okay, so what about the privacy concerns? Um, right now, we're just collecting data in the, in the aggregate. We don't have any sort of onboard diagnostic device that we're putting in. It's just, you know, how many miles did, did you travel? In fact, I just renewed my vehicle registration October 1st, had to put in the miles. Um, it's a relatively painless process. You can just go in. I had to check the odometer before I, um, before I went online and, and entered that number. But, um, you know, we're not, we're not looking down at the, at the granular level of this is how many miles Julie Butler drove. It's in the aggregate that we're reporting to the legislature of this is how many miles our citizens are traveling. This is the type of car that they drive so that they can get a sense of whether or not this might be a viable alternative to the gas tax at some point. Okay, and so and, and I presume you're also tracking electronic vehicles as well? Or yeah, vehicles. So, so the bill that, that requires us to collect this information also requires us to collect the type of, of vehicle that, that folks are driving. So we'll be able to break that down into gas-powered, diesel-powered, um, liquefied natural gas, uh, electric, hybrid electric. So it, it broke it down into various categories and various weights so that we'll be able to provide that information to the legislature. I have a totally stupid question that I know somebody will ask, so I'm going to ask it for them. Bicycles, we're pushing more and more people onto bicycles, scooters, etc. cetera. Um, is there any thought of, of, of doing any kind of tax with that? Because these people are still using the roads and may be increasing their use of the roads and yet they're not paying anything towards that, or, or is that just a non-starter? I think that's a non-starter, personally. I, I haven't heard any talk of that. <laughs> right. So, <yeah. laughs> Pretty simple answer there, and, yeah. and, and I'm not surprised. All right, yeah. we'll take a break. We'll be right back. Dimitri Prine here for Design Outdoor. Come visit Design Outdoor's store and backyard to see our wide selection of fire pits, barbecues, and pizza ovens, natural stone water features, and fountains, and frost-proof pottery. Our store and backyard are located at 11600 South Virginia, just north of DeMonte Ranch Parkway. Visit designoutdoor.com or call us at 851-9499. One of the most psychologically damaging things parents can do to children in divorce is disparage one another, which is why I can't believe I even have to make this commercial. Half of your kids' genetics come from this person you're spewing hate about. Your children have the right to love you both, but more than that, they deserve to love themselves. Marilyn York might be a men's rights divorce attorney, but this is for every selfish parent. Shut up! Hi, I'm Dave Newman. Remember me? I used to be the house detective, and now I'm a realtor, full-time at Remax Realty Affiliates. A lot of people ask me, how's the market? You know what? It's fantastic. If you're even kicking around the idea of buying or selling, give me a call. Let's talk about it. Call me at Remax Realty Affiliates and just ask for the guy who used to be the house detective, Dave Newman. Everyone is talking about opioids, but they're not the only drugs that can be harmful if taken in large quantities or not as prescribed. You also need to be aware of side effects from anxiety drugs, muscle relaxants, sleep aids, and stimulants. Mixing prescription drugs with other drugs or alcohol can be dangerous. If you take Ambien with a glass of wine, it may be enough to stop you from breathing. Prescribed drugs can be just as dangerous as illegal drugs. Take medications only as directed. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Julie Butler of the DMV. Um, got a lot of building projects in both Las Vegas and Reno. Just to quickly go over what we have. Sure. So we've got a new uh, 
new office under mm -hmm. construction in South Reno. And we're very excited about that. That is scheduled to open on um, Nevada Day weekend of 2020. You're gonna still keep Galetti? Uh, no, no, that, that, that will shut. be decommissioned and our Sparks Commercial Drivers License Office will also be decommissioned. Everything will be moved into the, the new location in South Reno. Okay, what about Las Vegas? Uh, we don't have any active construction projects down there at this time. But um, one of the things I did want to point out so that the viewers are aware of is we do have some partner locations at uh, AAA where you can do registration services. And so there is an area over at Sparks at Legends and uh, in Carson City on uh, South Carson and then there are four locations in Las Vegas. So um, you don't absolutely have to come to a DMV office for certain transactions and AAA, you don't even have to be a member to take advantage of those services and it's no additional cost to you as, um, as a resident to, to renew your registrations there. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much for coming in. We really appreciate it. Love to have you come back and talk more about where you go with this whole cybersecurity issue because obviously that's a huge deal. Absolutely. All right, thank you. All right, thank you. And we'll be right back. A bird's eye captures its surroundings at different heights. At Brian Culp of Photography, we can make your imagination soar over buildings, parks, cityscapes, and beyond. Brian's images tell the story and get the job done. If you need a new perspective to tell your story, contact Brian today. Brian Culpa Photography. Experience the bird's eye view at brianculpaphotography.com. Oh. Hey, Dad? Why are you learning? This place is great. Huh? You gotta try this. Wow, this stuff is great. People are gonna love it. Yes. Yes, they were. St. Ives Florist for every holiday and every special occasion. For romance, custom home design, we have the largest selection of fresh flowers in Northern Nevada. And we also offer a large selection of unique gift items. Come see me, Lori Ann, at St. Ives Florist, 700 South Wells Avenue, or call me at 333-9190. Pro Group Management specializes in providing industries with the necessary components to satisfy and exceed workers' comp requirements. Every business has unique needs and specific regulations. Pro Group Management stays ahead of the curve, providing up-to-date services to keep your industry in top form. Discover how we simplify your tasks, improve efficiency, and reduce expense to keep you moving in a positive direction. Pro Group Management. Workers' comp that works for you. As always, you can watch Nevada Newsmakers 24 hours a day at nevadanewsmakers.com. You can also download podcasts of the show free of charge at iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. Also, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. Everywhere is Nevada Newsmakers. We'll see you on the next broadcast.